Welcome to our last of the evening prayers of this week from me on Saturday the 7th of September. And uh, yeah, so we're going to just pause for a second to remember some of the things that we said about God and his relationship with us, that God is here, that he loves us, that although we mess up, God is forgiving, Jesus is active in our lives and the Holy Spirit brings about good things, witnesses to us of the way we should be. And then finally, just to say that in this and will be echoed in some of the things we're saying today is we are safe in Jesus. We are, we might say saved. That is it. true, but safe. We're secure in him when we know him. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the confidence that we can have because we belong to you. One of the things that the Methodist Church grew from was assurance. That isn't arrogance, Lord. That isn't, oh, I, I, I'm okay, I don't care about anybody else. This is a, a real reliance upon your grace that everything is out of your love and we can be sure we belong to you. So thank you for that security, that safety, that haven, that refuge. Thank you that it's not just for us, that other people can be called into it too. But we thank you that we are in a privileged position, that when we are born again, as it says in the story of Nicodemus, when we're born from above, uh, we can know that safety and that security. Thank you, Lord. And as we think about some of the things tonight, about your words and your ways, Lord, come Holy Spirit and cement these things into our will and our purpose and our personality that we might know your greatness and know your love in jesus name amen so um we're going to watch the other sort of half or last bit of the, the opening video we had on monday which was about the story of the garden of eden and what god's remedy is to that because of adam's one sin sin and all its messes came into the world for everyone life would be hard from then on the ground would be hard work would be hard marriage would be hard having babies would be hard and death would be really hard what a rotten day the second worst day in the history of the world and yet before you close this book and crawl under your covers and cry, you need to know that just as all the bad things began to happen, God's promise was beginning too. He promised that one day there would be a snake crusher to flatten that slimy serpent and save his sinful people. A war was about to begin, but God had already guaranteed that because of a great one to come, the good guys would win. Uh, so finally, we, we've we been thinking about people who've been leaving, haven't we? Adam and Eve from the garden. The man at the pool, did he continue? The rich ruler who walked away. The crowd who could take it no more because the teaching was hard. And Judas who couldn't take the way of Jesus. But I want to finish with words to us from Jesus. Um, echoed in Hebrews 13 verse 5. Hebrews 13 verse 5. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now that is mixed with all kinds of feelings I'm sure. That God has made a way that we can know him. And 
he says, I will never leave you. That That is a word of promise. And yet we must keep before us the very bad day in, in the first uh, thing on Monday that we still have free will. We have free will. It's not as though God abandons us, but we need to respond. But those who have done so know that that has always been true, that even before we knew him, we knew he was really active. Uh, now we do. Uh, we recognise that he was always there, always um, forming us, provoking us, blessing us, even when we didn't know him to come to know him more. And now that we do, we hear his words, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And, and God, may that be true right to the end of our lives, that we would not forsake you and that we would find in you all the goodness and help that we need. So although many people do leave, as we heard about in the Gospels, God never does. Let's just pray for a second. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Pray for those who maybe we were reminded of in this week when we thought about those who walked off or didn't continue. Thank you that you are like the waiting father in the prodigal son looking down that road. We thank you that you came searching for us as well in the person of Jesus. We thank you that the Spirit is right by those who believe and those who would believe if, if they would just turn. Help us to know your faithful presence and love and help us to know that for ourselves and to promote that in every way that we do, in speech and in action and in uh, witnessing that the church may be a haven for those who come home. And we ask these prayers now in the name of Jesus, our faithful Redeemer and Saviour. As we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So thank you for um, uh, bearing with me this week with this theme. And uh, uh, I pray that uh, we might know God's faithful love always. So we're going to finish with a lovely song. Um, uh, speaks of the goodness of God. All my life, it says in it, you have been faithful. All my life you have been good, so good. And help us to know that. And may we be people who spread that good news that others may know it too. So I'll see you again around the circuit and uh, in, <laughs> in the future uh, with evening prayer. I love you, Lord Oh, your mercy never fails me In all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so so good With every breath that I am able Oh I will sing of the goodness I love your voice You have led me through the fire And in darkest night
night You were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God Of the goodness of God.